Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about the energy healing work that we do called Brennan Healing Science. And the reason we're doing this episode next is because I got a dream telling me that we need to explain to people what our energy healing work is. Mm -hmm. So despite having other ideas, it was clear that we needed to get this one out there. So I'm going to start this one off with a story on pretty much how I've been led for a very long time to become an energy healer. And so the story is, as a teenage, young teenage Brandon, I was looking for tattoo ideas on Google image searches. And I found this image of hands with a blue background with white light pouring out of the two hands. And I loved that image. I was just so drawn to it. And I made it the background on my computer. And so it was the background on my computer for a couple of years in high school. And then through all of college, it was still the same background on my computer. And it wasn't until years later, at the age of 23, I got my first tattoo. And it's a big one on my side. It's an angel uh, speaking to a human, which could be any human. And um, the human has his hands positioned, his or her hands positioned in a way where light is pouring out of it. And so for this tattoo, I brought a printed image out of that image. That was the background on my computer for all those years. I brought that to the tattoo shop and said, I want this incorporated into my tattoo. And he altered the hand positions a little bit, but I brought that image in and uh, he made it happen. So it's part of the tattoo. And at that point, um, I mean, really nothing else in my awareness around this image until a bunch of years later, I, I forget exactly how old I was, 27, 28, somewhere around there. I was in New Zealand and I was working at a ski resort and my guides told me to quit my job. And I was really shocked by that. And so I checked in three days in a row and the message was the same, quit your job, quit your job, quit your job. And so I called my mentor who was back in the United States and said, listen, this is what I'm very clearly being told is to quit my job. But I don't know why. I don't know where I'm supposed to go next. I mean, if I quit my job, then what? And he checked in for me and he came back and said, they're telling me that when you get to where you need to be, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, all right, well, that's extremely unhelpful. <laughs> but um, all right, I guess that's all I got to go with. So what I ended up doing was I hitchhiked through New Zealand from the South Island to Auckland and the North Island. And that's a story I plan on telling in one of these episodes one day because it was just amazing how many synchronicities showed up on that journey. But it was a journey with no game plan. Um, I just held a sign that said North. Didn't know where I was going to end up um, every day. And eventually I landed in Auckland and I found a place to live for a longer term. And it was an older couple. And one of the first days staying there, they were both gone at work. And so I was looking through their bookshelf and I see a book called Hands of Light. And so I pull it out of the shelf and the front cover of that is that image, that image that's meant <laughs> so much to me in my life. It's not a similar image. It was that image. And I had no idea None that that was a book or related to a book or anything. And so I already had, um, you know, a spiritual background at that point. And this book is all spiritually based. It, it goes into many things, but it's all about hands on healing with energy and chakras and it's just incredibly detailed. And um, I was just, I was in love with that book. So instead of like going and hiking volcanoes and I don't know, doing New Zealandy stuff, I stayed holed up in my room and I just poured through that book. It's a, it's like a big textbook. I've read the whole thing in a couple of weeks, uh, just taking pictures of all the pages because I knew I'd have to leave it. 
behind. Um, of course, I could have bought my own, but um, yeah, I was just in love with that book. And in that book, uh, it's by Barbara Brennan, and it's about her specific healing science. So it's called Brennan Healing Science. And she has a school around this that was founded in, in the 80s. And so again, I was like, holy crap, this image, not only is it a book, but this image from my life, it's also a school. Like, holy crap. <laughs> and at that point, I was running out of money in my life. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like something I was going to jump into right then and there. But uh, it was in my awareness and a seed was planted. And as I look back now, after having attended the school, um, I can see that the years between me learning about it and the years, you know, the years between me learning about it and when I enrolled, I was being prepped for the work that I'd be expected to do in the school. It's a lot of uh, self journey, self growth, um, healing yourself, self awareness, growth. Um, and I, I did a lot of that with one of our previous mentors as kind of like a prep before I ended up in the school. So to me, this is a pretty incredible story. Um, I was clearly on some level being guided here for a very long time, over 10 years, uh, probably longer. Um, and that's my story. And then Sophia was also guided in her own way. And so she's got her own stories here. Yeah, and so mine also takes place in New Zealand, and this was at a different time than when Brandon was there. We had gone back for a trip, and so we were in a city. I actually don't remember what city specifically, but there was a bookstore there, and I went into the bookstore and curiously looked around, and I was really drawn to this book, and I had no idea what it was, but something just kept pulling me back to that book. And it was called The Pain Merchants by Janice Hardy. In that book, uh, she describes the difference between trained healers and untrained healers. And they heal with their hands. So this was really an introduction to hands-on healing for me. Um, I have very fond memories of Brandon and I taking turns reading the book to each other in New Zealand in the back of our hatchback vehicle that we were sleeping in. And so that really opened me up to, okay, well, this is a possibility. Um, I didn't know of the school uh, before I met Brandon. He knew about it, but um, I wasn't really considering it for myself at that point, just had an introduction to it. And so it was very synchronistic because right after that, we were kind of organically led to the school by a Brennan Healing Science practitioner here in Colorado. And uh, that just came up right, you know, shortly after Sophia was reading this book. And so I was sure that I was meant to go to the school and Sophia checked in for her own guidance. Yes. And so I asked my guides, is this in my highest and best for me to go to Barbara Brennan's school? I said, send me a sign, however you want to do that. And I left it at that. And then I got song lyrics dropping into my head repeatedly. The song is by Nako, and it's called Budding Trees. And the lyrics are, time to increase my frequency, hands of light and bodies talking. So uh, <laughs> I hadn't listened to Nako for uh, a while, and... The fact that that song repeatedly kept coming into my head and it would be like, okay, I would ask Spirit, did you mean to send me that? Can you send me another sign? And that was repeatedly sent to me. Um, so I took that as a sign that, yes, it's time to go to Barbara Brennan's school. So then we signed up and when it started, you had to fly to one of their locations. They have locations all around the world. We joined the Florida school and five times a year, you needed to fly to Florida or wherever and attend a week of classes. And then in between each school week throughout the year, you'd have a ton of homework and a lot of personal work to do with your own chosen counselor or different private practitioners. And so we were on the airplane and we land in Florida for week one, year one. 
and a song drops in very loud and clear as I'm walking off the plane. And it says, this journey that I'm on is not for suckers and punks. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back, I understand why they said that. It's a four-year yeah. program and uh, it's not for suckers and punks. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> uh, what it is, is a, it's a real life Hogwarts. And, um, you know, it's it's a school of magic, really. But we're not going to make this podcast all about the school. Uh, just that's a little bit of an intro. We're going to be talking to you about what we do now, having graduated the school. But to wrap it up, in the school over four years, we learned a very specific healing techniques, and we did a ton of personal process, inner work, exploring our triggers removing blockages from our own energy field and being aware of ourselves and our biases and and uh, all sorts of stuff. So that's what we did for four years to learn Brennan healing science. At this point, I also want to mention that we are also Reiki masters. And so I briefly just want to touch upon that, maybe highlight some of the differences uh, to explain to people who are curious and to people who may also be curious why we seem to emphasize more our Brennan healing science background than we do the Reiki background and why we bother to mention both of them. And so there's a lot to be said. I'm going to keep this discussion brief and use a metaphor. And so metaphors are imperfect, but, uh, and there's a handful I thought of that I might use, but ultimately I'm choosing this one and, uh, we'll just go with it. So that is Reiki to Brennan Healing Science is a perfectly tuned guitar being played without any fingers or hands on the frets versus a perfectly tuned guitar being played with the hand and fingers over on the frets. And so I chose that example because Brennan Healing Science is far more specific in what you learn as far as the applied energy healing techniques. And so both Reiki practitioners and Brennan Healing Science practitioners are channels for the divine energy. So it's the same instrument and it's both beautiful. A perfectly tuned guitar sounds beautiful, but over the four years of learning the Brennan Healing Science, you learn how to adjust, enhance, manipulate in various ways that energy for more specific targeted purposes than how we were trained in Reiki. And that's not to put down Reiki, because if you think about it, using the metaphor, individuals are so creative um, when they apply their, their true selves into whatever they're applying to. And so you could find, let's say, a Reiki practitioner who's playing that guitar with no hands on the frets, and it sounds amazing like they're picking individual strings and maybe even thinking outside the box and and drumming on the belly of the guitar and bringing in their voice and maybe even bringing in crystals and whatever other gifts or modalities they're trained in because that's that's one thing that both have in common both reiki and brennan healing science are expansive enough to allow in other modalities and so for example sophia and i being trained in reiki we're also certified in crystal healing Brennan Healing Science allows, it's expansive enough to allow both those things within the healing, a Brennan Healing Science session. And so the last main point I want to make around all this is that the barriers to enter Brennan Healing Science are much larger than the barriers to enter into training for becoming a Reiki master. And those barriers being time and money. It costs a lot more money and takes four years, um, minimum to become a Brennan Healing Science practitioner with a lot less time and money needing to be invested to become a Reiki master. And so because of that, Reiki is far more popular. A lot more people have gone through that training. And so because it's more popular, it's more widely recognized. And so we just use the term Reiki frequently to reach common ground with people who may not know anything or have ever heard of Brennan Brennan Healing Science. I'm finding that a lot more people, even if they're not quote unquote into this stuff, have at least heard the term Reiki and have a general idea of what that's about. So we do use the term Reiki in our materials, uh, but you could more accurately say that what we practice 
is Brennan Healing Science because we find it to be a lot more specific in its approach. We're here today to talk to you about Brennan Healing Science. So the first thing I want to say before we jump into it is that Brennan Healing Science works in conjunction with modern medicine. Okay, so that seems to be something that uh, is a misconception a lot of people have. So I just want to make that clear. This isn't anti-doctors, anti-medical field, anti-medicine. Um, this is in conjunction with all of that. So with that said, let's jump into what's specific about Brennan Healing Science. I'm going to answer that question by sharing with you a homework assignment that I had to do as a year one student in school. And so the homework assignment was your uncle, Mr. I am curious, has heard that you are studying some kind of miracle healing technique and wants you to write him all about it. So I said, yo, Unc, I'm so glad you asked. Basically, the premise of what I'm learning is that a lady named Barbara Brennan started out as a NASA physicist. She eventually took her interest of exploring outer worlds and started exploring her own inner psychology. Eventually, she became a counselor of sorts. One day, she started actually seeing the energy fields that exist around her clients. She blinked her eyes and tried moving around the room, but what she was seeing persisted. And so she then made it her life's work to study, understand, and map out these energy fields. She learned that she could manipulate them to create physical and energetic healing in her clients. And she also learned how to teach others to perceive and manipulate these fields. She wrote some books that I could recommend if you're interested. And she founded the school that I'm currently attending with Sophia. Love, Brandon. And so those books that Brandon was referring to are called Hands of Light, Light Emerging, and Core Light Healing. The first two books, Hands of Light and Light Emerging, were written in the 80s, and there's a lot of people that have gone through this school already, so you could find them pretty inexpensive online used. And in Brandon's letter, he mentioned physical healing, so that's pretty self-explanatory, but what's meant by energetic healing? Let's talk about that for a second. Um, some examples could be energy levels, your motivation, your intention, uh, the relationships that you have in your life, stress management, and intuition. And those are just some examples to uh, give you an idea of what we mean by energetic work. Now, everything in the energetic field is linked to the physical, so it is all linked together. And this is just a glimpse at some of the work that we do. Now, I want to break down for you kind of the foundation of how Barbara looks at the human energy field and how she mapped it out. And so she works with four different dimensions. And the first dimension is the physical dimension. The next one is the auric dimension. The next one is the haric or hara dimension. And I'll explain all these in a second. And the last one is your unique core essence or your core star. And so the way that you as a unique individual being come into this physical dimension actually goes in the opposite order than what I just listed. So you come in with your unique core essence and your essence has a purpose for this lifetime. That's your intention. And so the energy of your essence flows into the next dimension, which is the haric dimension. And so your hara is actually an energetic representation of your intentions for this lifetime and if they're aligned with your true soul essence and what you came here to do, or if they're out of alignment that actually shows up in the energy field on the haric dimension. I just want to jump in and say that the unique core essence is what is timeless about you. That is something that you carry regardless of what physical body you're in. Yes, it's without distortions. It's beyond lifetimes and distortions begin in the haric dimension. And so from your intentions in this life, that energy bleeds into your auric field. And your aura is where your personality exists and is shown. And the auric field has seven different levels to it that we work with. It has more, but there's seven that she has mapped out that are 
are the closest to this physical existence. And so those are the ones she teaches us to manipulate for healing. And so people might ask about the chakras. Well, the chakras and the auric field are interrelated. And so we work with both. Yeah, the chakras exist on the auric level and they look vastly different depending on which one of those seven levels of the auric field that you're on. And so, of course, the last dimension is your physical body. So how your energy goes through all those dimensions into your physical body has a a direct correlation to your health and state of well-being here in the physical. And so that's why working on the distortions in these different energy fields, um, it, it translates to how you feel in your physical body. And so between those four dimensions and then the auric field having seven levels, there's very different techniques for each of those dimensions and each of those seven levels. They're very specific and very different. And that's part of why it's a four-year school. There's a lot to learn um, and it's it's very detailed in, in how you go about it. Mm-hmm. And so we want to list off some of the techniques that we do in our healings that we learned in school. And this is by all means not an all-inclusive list. This is just kind of some of the ones that are more or less self-explanatory in their titles. Um, But we do go beyond what's here. So um, one of them is we align your higher self's intentions for this lifetime. We work in the Haruk dimension. Uh, One is... We expand your sense of your true core essence. And I just want to come in and say that expanding your true core essence is what is there purely without your programming. Programming is what you were taught to be in this life. And core essence would be what if you weren't taught that way? What if you just naturally did what you wanted to do from a place of purity within? And some of those distortions can actually come through different lifetimes. Yes. Um, it's just something that your your true essence is here choosing to experience. And so we do chakra readings and we restructure chakras. We do spiritual surgery, which I've talked about in some other episodes. Uh, it's one of my favorite. We can do unconditional love immersion. We can clear astral objects and entities that may be in and affecting your field and your life. We can repair and work on relationship cords. We can do lineage healing, death and dying support, trigger work, and vicious cycle process work. So we help support you if you're seeing the same patterns in your life and um, seems like your life is just in turmoil from the same kind of repetitive cycles. We can help um, give you some healing around that and really know what's going on underneath. And a lot of that work is done by clearing and enhancing emotional energy, um, very specific techniques around that. We can do organ restructuring, a spine clearing. A lot of energy is actually held in the spine, and so um, we can help clear that out so you can feel lighter. And speaking of feeling lighter, we offer joy healings. Um, That one's particularly fun. Um, We do past life healings. And as I listen to us speak about all these different techniques, I'm realizing a lot of them have a quality of grounding. So we can really help you feel grounded here in this physical body, in this physical lifetime. Uh, Barbara always said it's never to be underestimated how much of this lifetime is about the physical. So a lot of these help us bring in our higher self qualities into this physical life. And in some of these healings, we combine uh, methodologies. We might give you an organ restructuring if we feel that is needed, and also a chakra restructuring or clearing some kind of astral object or entity. So it's not a strict list. These are just things that come up and present. So we see what is there and what is present, and then we address that with our healing techniques. And we're going to mention this again in the section on what we offer, but specifically with Aspen Roots and Sophia. Via and I is that we work together unless otherwise requested we do all of our sessions together and so you have two healers working on you sensing two different things working in two different areas of the body working in different dimensions or levels of the field and so a lot of work gets accomplished that way in the healings and also working with particular angels and guides um 
mine might be different than Brandon, different uh, channelings that come in. So that's just to give you some idea. So the last thing I want to harp on for this section is how uh, kind of what Sophia's book alluded to that she shared with at the beginning is that there's a real benefit to having somebody trained in these healing modalities. It's it's something that anybody is capable of, but I think about other jobs in my life that I've had. Like I've been a plumber. You don't want to call Sophia to fix your plumbing issues. <laughs> she could probably learn them, but she hasn't been trained in them. I've been a driver. You don't want to have, uh, <laughs> You know, just anybody random driving a bus of 30, 50 people on uh, mountain passes. and Yeah, and I work used to work in the hospital. So again, you don't want anyone who's not trained working in the hospital. So it just makes sense. Yeah, I'm sure you can think to your own life. But uh, that's the only thing that makes us trustworthy compared to having uh, your friend with no training lay hands on you. I'm sure some work could get accomplished, just like, you know, if somebody jumped behind the wheel of a bus or wanted to try to fix some plumbing, you'd have some success. But if you want to go deeper with more expertise, you know, I think that's why this training has been really helpful. And I say that because I actually started doing some of the work that's described in detail in the Hands of Light book before we signed up for school or even really even thought that we'd ever sign up for school. And so I was doing some some degree of healing work and I had some degree of success and it was fun and exciting and this and that. But what I learned over the four years is just a whole nother level than what I was doing self-taught out of the book. So there's one other point to make around this and it's more from the perspective of a trained healer and how it impacts the healer versus an untrained healer, less concern about the client in this case. And again, it's exactly what Sophia's book that was synchronistic that she talked about at the beginning of this podcast was all about. And that being the difference between a trained healer and an untrained healer, or one of the differences is that an untrained healer will take on the pain of the person they're healing. And so they, when you're doing that, you can't do that long term. It's not a sustainable way of practicing this energy work. And Barbara says that one of, the, actually not one of, Barbara says the number one mistake she sees in students learning healing energy is bringing the client's pain into their own body to feel it rather than sending out streamers or feelers of energy and working at the location of the client's body. Okay, so let's talk about remote energy healings. So we're kind of the lucky ones in this regard. Normally remote energy healings were taught in year four of school, but because of COVID hitting, we learned remote energy healings early on in year one of school. So we have both given and received many, many remote energy healings, both in school and since school. And during the, our time in school, we were supervised by our teachers who have gone through seven years at the Barbara Brennan School of Healing. So we consider our teachers badasses in this category. We can tell you from our personal experience that the remote energy healings really do work. And so I have a story around that. Um, I was doing a homework assignment with a practice client and this particular practice client had been a mentor to me in the past. And so I knew that her HSP was what I considered uh, really impressive. And I went in a little nervous. I felt like I would definitely be seen and um, accurately, uh, she'd be able to accurately sense what I was doing and, and this and that. So I went in a little bit nervous and we're on a video call and we start the healing and I'm just a minute or two into it, and very loudly I get lyrics that drop in my head, and they said, the first step is when you start believing it's real. <laughs> and so I realized I was like kind of holding back in fear, worried about being judged um, or critiqued or what have you. And so um, I took the message of the lyrics, and I just told myself very strongly, this works, this remote energy healing works and 
and I went about my healing. And as soon as I did that, the energy picked up like crazy. Like it's just, you know, something I could feel. And I went through a very um, specific sequence. I went down each leg and then up her torso. And like I said, we we're on a video call and she's laying there with her eyes shut. She's not watching me. And at the end, she said, wow, that was very interesting. I could feel you go down each of my legs and then work up my body. And she did <laughs> sense it correctly. Like I knew she would. Uh, but it was cool that my guides really had my back and helped instill in me with those lyrics uh, the confidence to uh, continue uh, trusting the remote healings. And so since that story, it's, you know, my trust has turned into a knowing. It's developed and come a long way. But here's the cool part about that story and how things ended up for her after this healing. And I'm sharing this with her permission. So part of what we talked about at the beginning of her healing was how she's more comfortable being in a staffing role as a teacher for the Light Body Academy. And there's a block from her going out and doing her own business around the energy work that she's very highly capable of. And so the healing that I gave her was a Hara healing, which as I mentioned earlier, is the level of intention. So I went through and strengthened and aligned her intentions to be in resonance with her soul's journey. And it was only a matter of weeks after that healing that she went into practice for herself. And so my words, not hers, she's really, really, really skilled in the astral level. Um, but if you want to see what else she offers and how she frames the work that she does, her name is Stacy Hernandez. And you can find more on her website at soulpaztransformation.com. That's S-O-L-P-A-Z transformation.com. I just want to make a very brief mention about how this healing energy stuff works, whether it's remotely or not. And the best way to put it is through harmonic resonance. And so I would encourage you to go to YouTube and search for harmonic resonance of tuning forks or resonance of tuning forks. And you'll see how if you find, if you put two tuning forks that are tuned to the same frequency next to each other and you hit one of them, it will make the other one that you did not hit start sounding. That's exactly what we're doing when we tune into different dimensions or different levels of the auric field and we put ourselves in resonance with those frequencies and then charge and strengthen it, it then affects the client's field in the same way that the tuning fork experiment works. And if you guys want to look up the science behind any of this, uh, there's some quantum mechanical theories that you can check out. One is called the double slit experiment. And you can search quantum entanglement. And there is uh, the unified field theory that Nassim Haramain expanded on and added to and created the Haramain Rauscher metric. And Nassim Haramain is a physicist. So. Let's talk about what we offer next. At the time of recording this podcast, we're offering three main things, those being weekly remote group energy healings, private remote energy healings, and private nutritional consults. There's a couple other things we offer, and some of these services are on our Patreon, but in the future that could change, so go to our website healwithaspenroots.com to see uh, the most current what's what with what we got going on. As Brandon mentioned earlier, we do work together. And so you'll have a team of two healers working on you at all times. And all of our sessions are open to both humans and animals. I am certified in animal Reiki. And we've had both humans and pets in our group sessions, and private sessions. So let us know how we can support your beloved pet. And also we want to mention that we hold a strict boundary around confidentiality. So whatever takes place in your healing room stays in your healing room and it will not be discussed outside of the healing room. This is a big one, which some of our previous mentors didn't follow. And so we feel strongly about it. I just want to put that out there. Uh, but first, let's talk to you about the group healings. 
We're happy to bring you our group healings because they're affordable. Because of the group format, we're able to keep the price low and they're consistent, happening weekly, so a great way to continue your healing process. Also, because you don't have to show up for an appointment and you'll receive the healing regardless of where you're at, it's great for people on the go. And so I want to tell the story of how these group healings came to be. And it's really a retelling of somebody else's story because we got the idea from one of our teachers who uses this format in his healing business practice. And so once we had a few people signed up for hours, we hit him up for two reasons. One, we wanted to get his blessing, and two, we wanted to discuss exactly how he was executing the energetic techniques behind the scenes and just see what we could learn from him based on uh, comparing it to how we were doing it at the time. And so he told us the story of how the format came to be for him, and he was in South America on uh, like a lifetime trip and was given this very vivid dream that was told that people in the world need healing and they need it at an affordable price. So giving a group healing allows healing energies to be transmuted at an affordable price. And so he said a big part of that dream was that other people were also going to copy him and use the same format. And I was like, in a good way or, or a bad way? Like, <laughs> are we stealing your idea and we shouldn't be? He's like, no, in a good way. He's like, you guys, you come from the heart and I see your intention. I can feel it. And that meant a lot to hear from him because his HSP, as far as I'm concerned, is is off the charts. And so he gave us his blessing and said that it's what the world needs and he's He's happy that, that it's us two doing it. So it, was, it meant a lot to get his blessing, and and we've been continuing. So um, what we do is the day and time changes every week. We let you know a week ahead of time. And so that way it can adjust with our um, life that's not really on a rigid schedule and hit other people's schedules so different people at different times can – can find an opportunity to be free for this, but it's not something you need to connect with us for. And it's not something you need to stop your life for. If you're available and have the opportunity to lay down and go into a meditative state at the time and day that we say we're going to start, great. But if not, if you're on the go or at work or whatever, you'll receive the healing energies anyways. And, uh, whether you feel it all in that moment or they start to integrate and come in over the next few days. And so we know this with some profound stories we've got from, from our clients. And, um, at the end we make a recording, a voice recording, Sophia and I. So yeah, in this recording, we will go over what we experienced during the healing, the energies, the shifts, the themes, Uh, what angels and guides were present, if there was anything channeled through. And so it gives you an opportunity to listen as many times as you would like back in on our experience with the healing and what transpired during that time. We've heard from multiple people not related to each other that they feel like they get a second healing when they're listening to the recording. So that's just been cool to hear as feedback. And so we change the topic and the focus of the weekly healing each week, and we work on a different system of the body or a different intention. And so the way this differs from a private session is a private session is geared totally around the specific needs of an individual, and we'll probably work on multiple systems in the body and the energy field during a private session, whereas in the group healing, it's everybody is getting whatever system or focus we're working on. And just a couple examples are, we may work on the heart. And when we say the heart, we are focusing on both the organ physically and also the chakra and the energies that intermingle between the two. Yeah, all the implications of it, or we may work on the liver, or we may work on energetic grounding. We may work on uh, feeling love, all sorts of different things. And Um, Everybody in the group healing gets that exactly. And so having a group exponentially expands the resonance of these healings. 
both having multiple healers and having a, a group. And I'll tell you right now, there's a handful of members in our as clients for this group weekly group healings that are healers themselves. So having these healers who are also trained to focus intently on what we're working on just adds a lot of energy to the space and, and depth. And so with that said, occasionally Sophia and I bring in guest healers. So you get exposure to other healers that you may want to work with. And it also exponentially adds to the resonance of the field. So then you'll have three healers working on you, or if we bring in more, you'd have even more healers working on you all at once. Exactly. It's all changing and growing at the same time. So, And so the last thing I want to mention with this is that we do a monthly drawing for a free private session with Sophia and I. So if you're part of our weekly group healings, then you automatically get entered into that drawing. So feel free to check it out. You can see all the different topics that we've done since we've started. You can listen to snippets of the audio recordings that we've done for some of the more recent healings. And right now you can find all of this at patreon.com slash aspenroots. Okay, let's move on to private sessions and what to expect in a private session. So first of all, um, private sessions, I would say this is where the gold is. If you're really looking to transform your life and receive specific guidance and specific healing for what you're going through, the private sessions are really going to offer you that opportunity and that one-on-one -on -one time with Brandon and myself to be able to um, know how to heal yourself in the best way or what is presenting for you. When you do a private session with us, here's what you can expect. We meet you on a video call and we sit down and we just talk about what's here. What's here now for you? What do you want to work on? And then you lay down on camera in a meditative state and you can see us working on our table here on our camera. And we give you the option of listening to music, either your own or we can play some through the, the Zoom call. And Sophia and I go on mute so we don't startle you. And we occasionally have to talk to each other to communicate what we're seeing or what we're working on. And so we concentrate on different parts of your energetic field and your physical body during the healing. And so Brandon will be doing one task and I'll be doing another. Sometimes we do support each other doing the same task in your healing, but you'll get a lot out of uh, having two healers there because we're really able to do more just having the two people. And also want to mention that consistency is really important when you get healings. Um, it's not a one and done kind of thing. And I just want to jump in and say that's why the weekly group healings are, are really beneficial. They're affordable and every week, every week, every week. But you'll notice we offer these six session packages uh, because of exactly what Sophia is saying here. So healing really is a process. And uh, just to give an example, um, you wouldn't go to like one massage if you were having a chronic illness or chronic problem. You would go to many massages or follow them up with each other so that you had a cumulative effect um, that you're really looking for. So that is very important in this process is to know that that continued dedication to yourself is really important when you're looking for long-term healing benefits. And that's why we chose six healings. Just based off experience, we found that people who commit to at least six sessions have the greatest change, um, the most noticeable change in their lives. Yeah, and also, you know, the body takes the body and the energetic field take time to remember these changes and really live them and embody them. And so that's why receiving many healings consistently can really help support that process. And then also depending on where you're at, you know, you're only ready for what you're ready for. If uh, your chakras are only open a little bit and can only take in so much energy, it doesn't matter if we're channeling all the best craziest energy in the universe you're only going to absorb what you're ready for and that's something that will change over time for you and so the next thing I want to talk about related to that is what you can expect to feel during these healings 
and that's very unique to the individual. And I will tell you right now, when I got my first professional healing and I was the client, I felt nothing. He told me the session was over and I couldn't believe it. I looked at the clock. I was like, I didn't feel anything. Like I read the Barbara Brennan books. I thought this was going to be something crazy profound. And (laughs) uh, I think I just laid here and breathed and felt nothing. And uh, it was my first impression. But not too long after that, I ended up going to the school and I continued to to pay for professional sessions during that time. And um, as my energy field changed as a result of the work I was doing and the healings I was getting, I started noticing way more. And uh, I worked with a couple of healers who didn't even keep me on camera. We would just talk on the phone, hang up, and then I'd lay there. And I knew exactly where they were working and we'd connect after and they'd tell me what they did and and I'd be able to feel it. So I had quite a change between that first healing and the subsequent ones. And so some of our clients who are healers themselves, they tend to to feel a little more and uh, notice more than maybe some other people do. And if you're healing from something emotional, I've had this experience where uh, a healer will work on something, let's say, in your lineage, uh, a curse or something like that. And then the next week after the healing, I saw all these emotional releases that had to do with the healing that I received that released these curses or these belief systems that were in place in my lineage. So that's just one example of how the healing can continue Um, not just in the session, but as you go out and live your life, um, these energetic effects start to take hold and help you heal from what you're seeking healing for. And I got two more examples that just came to mind of healing work that's been done where I maybe didn't feel something when I was on the table. And one of those is when the healer is working on uh, family relationships. I didn't really feel anything for myself, but in the time that followed, I noticed the relationship with the person that the healer was working on change for the better. And so it was just evidence. And then another time I was given a a haric healing. So that's the level of my intentions. And I didn't feel much, but I just noticed when I looked back, like, wow, after that hara healing, all of a sudden I got super motivated and I started signing up for this and doing that. And I really got on my spiritual game as I like to call it. So I see evidence of the healing in my life in the physical, even if I don't feel something when I'm laying down. And one more example I want to throw in there. This one was pretty profound for me. I had this leg pain and I saw a healer and uh, she discovered a past life in which I had fallen a great distance and I broke my leg. And so during that healing, I didn't know the story behind it, but I, because she wasn't speaking during the healing, but I just had so many tears and so much releasing. And literally by the end of that healing, I didn't have any idea what really happened, but my leg didn't hurt anymore until I heard her story where she recounted that for me. And then I started to cry again because the truth hit me somewhere in my soul that that really was a reality for me. So these are just some examples of our experiences with healings. Yeah, so just to circle back for these private sessions is they're very unique to the individual and the range of what we could work on in a session is great. So... Probably the other big thing to mention for our business is the nutritional consults based off medical medium information, and we'll do a separate episode for that specifically. Uh, So for now, let's jump into our soulful send-off. Okay, so going to a healer, that's really about taking the next steps in your life and taking responsibility for yourself in a new way. Um, personal development, growth, really wanting to be the best version of yourself and see your blind spots and also heal those things that um, have troubled you in your life. It could be for from this life or past lives, but we really feel that going to a healer is about a commitment to yourself and your own self-healing and self-love. And I want to talk about the full spectrum healing that we promote on our website. And 
what we mean by that, that's kind of a term we came up with. It probably exists somewhere else if I had to guess. But what we mean by that is we approach healing from the physical toward the spiritual and from the spiritual toward the physical. And so what this episode has been about is more the, I'll, I'll say it differently, the subtle energies that come down into the physical. And the other aspect of this is taking care of yourself physically and having that affect the subtle energies. It works both ways. And taking care of yourself can mean many things. Uh, exercising, eating right, showering, sleeping, um, going to massage therapists, doctors, all of it. Uh, but I just want to share a story um, that's also kind of, and, and I'll add a metaphor to it to get my point across here. So we had a classmate for one of her art projects grow tomatoes, and she had two separate batches, and one of them she just let grow, and the other one she did hands-on energy healing, like what we learned in school, to the tomato plants. And the difference between the two batches was to me, mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were way taller, way healthier, uh, just drastically better on the side that she gave the energy healings to. And so this next part is the part I'm adding: that she watered them both, she took care of both of them physically. But I guarantee you, if she fed those tomato plants oil or something poisonous, or didn't take good care of it, you know, oil being like a metaphor for bad food or something. Um, or just getting pollutants and toxins in your body somehow, those plants would have died. You can't just take care of a living organism from the energy side and expect that's it. You really benefit from coming both ways by feeding that plant the healthy water with maybe the added nutrients that you need. Um, and it's the same for your physical body. And so that's where we, uh, we bring the full spectrum in by doing the nutritional consults with the medical medium information, which, um, as you probably know from other episodes, has changed our lives, and we're looking forward to doing a dedicated episode on that here soon. And we got to give a special shout out to our son, the puppy, Rossi, who has attended school with us for four years. And I, know, I know you just said puppy, but I want to make it clear that it's our dog. He's our dog. <laughs> Um, yes. And so he's, he attended school with us for four years and has been present for all of our healings. And so um, we've had a few clients tell us that they'll be in a meditative state and suddenly see Rossi's face appear to them. And uh, so we know he's helping out uh, in the astral realm, and which is the, also the dream world. And he is particularly good at being aware of the astral realm as well. Uh, during school, our uh, teachers would comment that he could see and was picking up on different astral beings in the room. And so that was confirmation to us to know that we have a special little boy here who loves to help us in our healings. Yeah, year two is dedicated all to the astral level, so... That's where we really got to see his skills shine. And so when we say, when you have a session with us, you get two healers. Oh, he gave, us, he gave a little bark <laughs> if you heard that. Uh, <laughs> he's been here the whole time. It's yeah. the first time he's barked. Um, so when we say that there's two healers working on you, what we really meant, and sorry if I offended you, Rossi, is that there's three of us here working on you. <laughs> yes, and Rossi is pure love. So, you know, who better to help heal than him? Yeah. With that said, we want to thank all of our supporters on Patreon who allow us to uh, have the time and space to bring you this free content and this podcast. And uh, looking forward to meeting more of you someday. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining this episode. And if you have any questions, I'm sure we left a lot unanswered. Uh, you know, we just ran over something that took us four years to learn in under an hour here. So uh, feel free to engage us with whatever questions you have and further the dialogue. Thank you all so much for your support. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Every week we share our most recent divine guidance in an audio recording called Oracle Offerings. Sign up for only $5 a month at patreon.com slash aspenroots.